I am super excited about today's video. This is the first of my weekly fitness videos and I wanted to start with a fitness Q&A. So I asked you all on Instagram some questions you had and I can make a two hour video honestly about this. I got so many good questions, but I picked some that I wanted to answer. We'll try not to make this a super long video because again, it could go very long. So we'll just start with the questions that I thought were pretty good. Okay, so first, is it better to eat before or after a workout? Both. It's honestly a horrible idea to work out on an empty stomach. Fasted cardio is different, but if you're weight training and you're doing that on an empty stomach, that's a horrible idea. But you also don't wanna eat right before your workout. So usually about like 30 minutes to two hours maybe before you work out. And then if it's a super intense workout, you wanna to try to eat within two hours after your workout too. There's a common saying my coach says that I think fat is burned in the flames of carbs. So carbs is essentially what is burning, like that's your energy that you're using when you work out. So eating a quick carb meal before you work out and then also after. So I know there's a lot of bodybuilders that will drink like pixie steaks after their workouts, which I think is disgusting, but it's pure sugar and carbs and it helps like reload your system again. Also protein after your workouts because protein is building your muscle. Protein doesn't give you energy. It helps keep you full, but yeah, it's not like energy to help you work out. So both before and after workout again, unless you're doing cardio that's fasted. Yeah. How do you strength train as a female without getting bulky? I think this is one of the biggest things that women have a fear of that makes them not weight train. But the thing is, unless you are trying to bulk up, you're probably not gonna get bulky. I think a lot of people look at these big women who compete in weightlifting and like bodybuilding and they have super like ripped six packs. And I know not a lot of women want to look like that, but you have to remember that a lot of these women are eating an insane amount of food. They are, a lot of them probably take boosters or steroids and you know, the female body just doesn't have that much testosterone to look like a man. I think, I'm trying to remember what it was, but I think I read in a book that men and women's muscle density is the exact same. So like it weighs the same, but men just have more muscle than women. So honestly, you're never probably going to get as bulky as a guy unless you take unnatural steroids and stuff. But weight training is something I think that everybody should incorporate even if it's just super light and it's not even that heavy. What are my main goals for weightlifting? I have a couple. I first want to get really good at Olympic weightlifting. So I'll talk about this in another video. Olympic weightlifting is the clean and jerk and a snatch. So those are barbell exercises that people compete in and I want to get better at those mainly with technique. I also want to tone up my stomach because I have a hard time keeping off fat off my stomach. I can get muscle in other places, but my stomach is one place that it kind of all goes to. And I'll talk about that in a sec too with a different question. What is one of your biggest regrets in your training or sports? <laughs> this one was not even hard. My biggest regret is not listening to my body when it told me to stop. There is a very fine line between pushing yourself and injury, and that's a line I've crossed a couple too many times. I think I've had a lot of injuries that I could have prevented if I had put my pride aside and stopped. My pride got in the way of a lot. I think with my calf injury, that was something that was probably gonna happen anyway just because it's genetics, pretty much. But I do think it's something I could have prolonged until after high school because I ran through that every single day with my calves on fire and I did it for four months, which I probably shouldn't have done. And then I injured my shoulder and like looking back, I had symptoms eight months ago and I was like, hey, you know, it's probably just cause I'm out of shape and my shoulders are hurting because they're weak. And so I would weight lift through that and I probably shouldn't have done that because now I literally can't lift anything that's super heavy. So I wish I had listened to my body more and not waited until I got injured. To stop. Just stop when you're supposed to stop. What sort of exercises can be done to reduce extra fat around the stomach? So this is known as like targeting fat or spot reduction and it's widely accepted that you can't just try to get rid of fat on your stomach. It has to be everywhere. However, there was a study that was done where they took three groups of people. One group did just upper body exercises 
one group did like no exercises and then one group did just lower body exercises and then they took their body fats and they noticed that in the group that did upper body exercises, they lost a ton of fat in their upper body and zero in their lower. So that might suggest that you can kind of target areas. Your stomach might be different, I don't know, but I would say if you wanna reduce extra fat in your stomach, oh, most of that is diet and most of that is eating and not really exercise. When you start exercising, do you lose weight or gain muscle first? Again, it depends on what you're eating and how much you're eating. If you are so overweight or you have so much fat on your body, it won't matter how much muscle you put on under it because it'll be hidden under fat. But if you're super skinny and starting to exercise, then you might wanna put on muscle because there is no fat to lose. So basically, if you want to lose fat, you want to eat less than what you burn in a day. And if you're wanting to build muscle, you want to eat more than what you burn in a day. So it really just depends on what your goals are. For me, right now, I'm trying to cut back a little bit of fat and then I'll start to build more muscle. And I'm not saying I am fat, I know I'm not fat, but I do still have some spots that I would like to reduce. And again, no spot reduction. I just wanna decrease my body fat percentage. Do you think it is more important to have a healthy diet or to exercise regularly? I would say if you had to pick between the two, I would say diet. Ideally though, of course you wanna exercise regularly and have a healthy diet. If you had to pick one, it would be the healthy diet because I don't think this is a true number, but I heard that like 80% of what you look like is from your diet, 10% is from exercise, and 10% is from genetics. Again, I don't know if those are believable numbers, but the concept is the same, that a lot of what you look like is due to how much you eat and what you eat. How to get rid of shin splints. Last year, most people on my track team had shin splints, and surprisingly, I'm always injured, but I did not have shin splints. But I learned how to help them with it. So for practices, we would like, I would like massage their shins out super hard with like a roller or even just my fingers and just, it's gonna kill and it's gonna hurt, but massaging it really helped. And then also taping it with KT tape or you see athletes that have like those color tape on their shoulders or whatever, that really helps. So you can look up like how to tape for shin splints. And that helped them, but honestly just a lot of stretching and massaging it. It's a long process, but it was preventable and treatable. Do you prefer working out by yourself or with somebody? I definitely prefer working out with people if they are going to work out too. I go to the gym and all like the high school boys are there, you know, and there's maybe one of them work that works out, but the rest of them just sit around and watch and take up weights that they aren't using. And that's kind of frustrating, but I definitely also don't like working out by myself. Like, I don't know, when, I very, when school ended and I was still going to the gym, it felt like all the weights were heavier, even though they weren't. It felt like they were heavier and it was kind of sad and I didn't really push myself as hard, you know, because you don't have your coach there, you don't have your friends there, but it's a mental block, but I would prefer to work out with people. That's why I take Chad with me to the gym now. How do you ensure you meet your macros each day? I try to eat a lot of protein because especially if we're going out to a restaurant, most restaurants' foods are high in fats or carbs and so I try to eat a lot of protein during the day at every meal just to make sure that if you know we do go out for a treat that night or something, I still have macros that I can eat from, if that makes sense. And I'll probably do another video explaining this. But just protein, I think, is the hardest macro to eat the most of. So definitely making that a priority. How in the world do you squeeze your abs? This is a great question because it's one that I was struggling with myself. Um, like I said, I noticed that I keep a lot of fat on my stomach and nowhere else. And then I realized that the more that you actively contract a muscle when you're exercising, the more toned it becomes, if that makes sense. So when they did a study where if people were doing bicep curls and when you actively squeeze the muscle that you're working out, it causes it to build more muscle. And even if you can't squeeze it, like even if you're telling it to squeeze and it's not squeezing, the thought of squeezing it has been shown to like slightly twitch the muscle and make little muscle movements. So thinking about actively squeezing my abs is something that I've been working on. And then there are some exercises where I'm like, oh wait, I forgot I'm supposed to be like actively trying to flex my abs. And then I go back to doing that. Whenever you're doing an exercise, I always try to like 
consciously contract the muscle and I have found that that helps a lot in muscle definition. I think if you look at big, like I think we all know the difference between a super toned guy and a big guy who can lift a lot of weights, but he doesn't look like as toned, if you know what I'm saying, because there's a difference in the muscle connection, the mind-muscle connection in the muscles. So just improving that mind of the muscles in whatever you're trying to target is super helpful if that makes sense. I'm probably making zero sense, but it's fine. How much water should I be drinking a day? I am 12 years old. So a good place to start is everyone should probably be drinking at least half of their weight in fluid ounces every day. Fluid ounces is what America uses. I don't know what other countries use. So for me, I would drink, a, I'm like 108 pounds maybe. So I would drink about 54-ish fluid ounces of water a day. And if you're exercising more, you should probably drink more water. Like if you're an endurance athlete, if you you know, do long exercises, you should probably drink more water than at least that half. But that's probably about the minimum that you should be drinking is half of your body weight in fluid ounces every day. Have you ever had your equipment on the wrong setting and only realized that after your workout? This is super funny because this has actually happened to me before. So there are these things called trap bars or hex bars and they, they call them hex bars because they look like a hexagon. <sighs> I wonder if we can find a picture, but it's a hexagon and it has two handles and then sticks on the sides that you can load weight onto it and you can deadlift with it. You stand inside of it and like you can deadlift with it. So the ones at our school are 45 pounds, the hex bars themselves. And so I went after school, like in the summer to the gym by our house and they had a hex bar too. And so I was putting the same weight on it I did at school and it was so heavy and I didn't know why. I thought it was one of those things, you know, that I was working up by myself and I was getting in my head. I thought that's what it was. And then I went home and told my dad about it and he's like, oh no, those are 75 pounds, not 45 pounds. So I was deadlifting like 30 pounds more than I normally did. So I mean, at least I knew I could deadlift more than I was, but that wasn't my favorite way to find out that I could do that. So that is one situation where I found out I had too much weight. There's always those times too, where you're like squatting or something and it feels off and then you look and realize that you have more weight on one side than on the other. That's also happened many times and that's not a fun situation either. What weights do you lift and how heavy? So again, kind of like my macros, I'm not gonna give you certain numbers of what I lift and what I don't because again, it all depends on your goals, it depends on your body type, it depends on your weight. If you're like 200 pounds, you're obviously gonna be lifting a lot more than someone my size. So I don't think that comparing how much people lift is very accurate, but I do try to lift as heavy as I can. And I've had some people tell me that that's really gross. And I've had some people tell me I look like a box because for someone how short I am, I shouldn't be lifting heavy weights. And I disagree with that. I think I like lifting heavy and I like feeling like I'm exerting myself, you know, but you know, lifting super heavy might not be for everyone. I did try a training program where I did light weights for more reps. And you know, that was good, but it wasn't my favorite way of training. So everyone is really different. And that's what I like about it is because weight training itself, you're going to increase muscle, whether you know, you're doing lots of reps or little reps, you're gonna get better and you're gonna improve yourself. And that's what I like about it is because everyone can get better at it. So yeah, there's a lot of videos from these questions that I would like to do, like calculating how much food you should eat, you know, stuff like that. So if you are interested in those videos, comment down below. Again, this is the first fitness video I've done, so we'll kind of fine tune it as we go along. But thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm excited for this journey. I feel like I want to keep going, but I shouldn't because this video is probably really long already. But thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.